so we should start again with the last session of the day, which has an economist, a physicist, and a mathematician. So we'll start by Franck. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm learning a lot today. Uh, OK, so this is, this is, this is going to be about like macro analysis. And I'll try to go back and forth from some data to, um, to, to simple models. And uh, this is based on, on, on you know, some ongoing wor work for years with <clears throat> those two colleagues, Paul Baudry, who is professor at, uh, at, at, at University of British Columbia, but at the moment is messing up the economy as the deputy governor of the Bank of, of Canada. And then Dana is uh, you know, still uh, at the university. So and we have been working on this quite a lot. So let me start with uh, perhaps, you know, um, I mean, the novel that has inspired uh, the most uh, new economist, which is, which is uh, Robinson Crusoe. And you know, that's great for economists. I mean, that's great for people doing social sciences, because uh, Robin, uh, Robinson is you know, uh, almost always alone on an island of despair, meaning that there are no social interactions. So you know, understanding what, what Robinson is doing is a bit easier than you know, with interaction. So that, that, that's a great start. And then when you read when you read uh, Daniel Defoe, you, you you know you try to understand try to understand like the economics uh, and the production uh, and the fluctuations in uh, Robinson's uh, Crusoe, uh, Robinson Crusoe's um, uh, economy. So as 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 Robinson uh, writes, uh, you know from the 14th of August to the 20th, incessant rain. So I could not stir and was now be very careful not to be much wet. In this confinement. I began to be straightened by, for food, just like in Shanghai recently. Uh, then, then, you know, the rainy season and the dry season began now to appear regular to me, and I learned to divide them so as to provide for them accordingly. So, you know, do we understand that? You know, the idea here is that, okay, Robinson is hit by some kind of like, you know, external forces, and is trying to kind of smooth out those forces as much as possible. So it's not only forming, it's also breeding, and so he's explaining that, you know, in about a year and a half, I had a flock of um, 12 goats, kids and all, besides several that I took and killed for my food. But this was not all. For now, I, had, I not only had goats' flesh to feed on when, when I pleased, but milk too. And so he's explaining, you know, how he's kind of like dealing with this breeding of, of, um, of goats to, again, try to get some regular and uh, non-fluctuating uh, intake of calories. So the idea here, and that's gonna, is that you know, on the island of despair, economic fluctuations, if they are, are only caused by, uh, by external shocks, like storms, uh, heavy rains, lack of rains, anything like that. And if anything, there are, you know, what happens is a smoother version of what, what happens to shock. You know, when there is, because, because Robinson is able to store some food, is able to kind of breed some goats, he will you know, typically uh, smooth um, what, what, you know, the, the, the shocks that are hitting the, the island. And on top of that, you know, absent of any you know, uh, fluct meteor meteorological fluctuations, he would reach a kind of like steady, nice, and uh, boring uh, situation where things will repeat forever. Okay, and that is that is typically the way we model economic agents as taken in isolation. Preferences are convex, production sets are convex. So we aim at you know stability. This is also something that we can see from you know revealed preferences. We do actually uh, subscribe insurances, for example. We do team up to uh, you know diversify risk and this kind of thing. We we hate risk. There are counter examples. People are losing their wealth, you know, betting on horses. But I mean, let's say that those people are more anomalies than than the average. So now I want to you know take this island and then put like many other uh, many other uh, agents on this island and let them interact. And I won't put them all on the island because you know the island is too small. So let's put all them. Let, let's put them all, uh, you know, in Berlin, at the beginning of the uh, uh, 20th century, and you know, to keep like the analogy with breeding, uh, I'm going to look at, you know, now once I put all a lot of agents together, and then they decided they, they decide to breed uh, porks, you know, what is going to happen? And this is something that was studied by by, by an economist in the in the 20s in in Germany, and it's called like the Hogg cycle, and it became like famous in economics. 
And you, so you, I mean, the guy is trying to do things like very carefully. So that's the price of uh, of, of pork in uh, pork meat in Berlin. And he's, you know, he knows that there's a trend. He knows that there are some seasonal fluctuations. He's trying to like, take care of that. And in the end, you find those kind of like, uh, you know, uh, uh, booms and busts. And you know, so why is it so? I mean, economists have studied this quite a lot. There's, there's a whole you know, literature on the so-called cobweb, which is exactly about that. And then basically the idea is that you know, when I decide to breed a, a pork, it takes a year. So when I, when I take my decision, this is based on the expectation of the price at which I will sell it. But that price is not something I'm controlling. It depends on what all the others are doing. So that price is really the, you know, like the variable that embeds, that encode all the social interactions. And, keep, and then, you know, depending on the way you form expectations, and then in the simple cobweb model of the 30s, if you assume that you form expectations based on the past, then you're typically, you're typically going to you know, react with one lag to what happened, and then, and then you would have like overproduction of pork, and then you know, underproduction of pork, and so on and so forth. That might, okay. So that's, 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 that's the idea of you know, social interactions creating fluctuations in a world in which you know, absent of those interactions, there would be no fluctuations, except those coming from exogenous sources. So that's, that's the kind of, uh, you know, I mean, no, nothing new for people in this audience that, you know, the sum is different from the, I mean, the whole is different from the sum of the, of the parties, but that, 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 that's the very idea. So the very idea that, I mean, a lot of people have been addressing, but I want to address today is also that, you know, can it be that interactions between agents uh, create fluctuations? And we have, you know, we, we, we've seen already uh, some economist colleagues that, that answer that question, so I just want to kind of like, uh, uh, also, I like, look at that from perhaps a bit different angle. Uh, you know, can those, and then, so can we have fluctuations? And more than that, can those fluctuations be cyclical? And I, I'm going to explain why, why this is kind of important. Boom burst dynamics. Cyclical means that, you know, when you're in the boom, you know, endogenously, the, the economy and social interactions are, create, are, are sowing the seeds of the next recession, which is itself sowing the seed of the next expansion, and so on and so forth. Okay, that, that, that's the idea. So, to put that in, into like simple schematic, let me think of the economy as being some you know, variable x that would be at zero absent of any shocks. Okay? So the view of, of Robinson Crusoe in Thailand is that, oh, maybe there's, there's something, there's a storm, and because of the storm, you know, the, uh, you know, that, that, that variable x that Robinson is trying to control is increased. Perhaps I should have decreased it, like you know, some goats are killed, or, but you know, it's increased. Then what, what has happened? Then, you know, according to this, uh, you know, Robinson view, because Robinson hates fluctuations, he will do things accordingly such that the economy will smoothly go back to uh, its uh, you know, normal state, its steady state, and stay there, absent of shock. So the idea is that you know, the economy in that way is inherently stable, and it can be destabilized because you know, you know, bad things happen, we can't control everything, but when something happens that hasn't been controlled and can be thought as exogenous, then you know, the economy will do everything to let itself land smoothly back to equilibrium. That's, that's the view of you know, a lot of like, the macroeconomic models which are used in, a, in, in the literature. Uh, yeah, and fluctuations are mainly created by, by shocks, exogenous shocks. So another view, which would be more like some kind of like a more different type of view, would be that, oh, you know, no, with interactions, when you basically sum all those black lines for different individuals, then you end up having some you know, fluctuations of that type. I call that uh, you know, cyclicality, meaning that absent of shock, you, know, you, like, you have like a boom, and then the boom is endogenously creating the source of like the, the, the recession, and then the boom, etc. And this might die out eventually. Uh, so that would be a view, a kind of like semi-optimistic, semi-pessimistic view of you know, market economies. Well, you know, they are not like really stable, but they are not like completely unstable. They are somewhere in between. You know, we're not gonna uh, expect that the economy at some point will, will, will explode and go, you know, and, and, and go who knows where. So, I mean, an ex not an extreme, but a, a bit more like a diff I mean, a, a view which is a bit similar, but a bit, you know, a different at the same time is that, oh no, in, the, in fact, you know, the economy is not, is not stable. Meaning that, yes, there is some steady state, but if you kind of, if you are moved away from that steady state, then you're gonna cycle forever, even absent of shock. Whether you want, you know, whether the, 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 the cyclical but 
converging line or the other one are very different, it's not clear because if you make the persistence very large, you know, it's not clear that in the data you can really, you know, see the difference between something which is permanent and something which is like super persistent. In particular, that, that, that was my question this morning about like in sample, out, out of sample. I mean, macroeconomists, we don't have like, we can't, you know, generate as many data as we want to validate our models. We have like a very few data because there's a lot, you know, there, there is structural change. So, you know, even if you give me data for the Middle Ages, I don't think it's going to be very useful to understand, you know, capitalist market economy. So we have, say, you know, data since, you know, World War War, since the 50s or something like that. So we don't have a, a lot of data. Anyway, so that's, I'm trying to, you know, to, 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 so what I want to, to understand is, how can I think of those outcomes in models which are, I would say, so what I'm trying to do is to have models which are, which are like simple enough so that I can understand what's going on. And then, you know, and then I'm going to go to the data again with simple models. So it's a bit of a complementary approach, a complementary approach to approaches which are relying more on uh, computer simulations. And, you know, this, it's not about something is better than the other. It's just like it's, I think it's useful to, to attack the questions from, from, from both angles. Uh, so, okay, so let me, let me say something about cyclicality. Do we have this cyclicality in the data? And for that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to use this, this, like, um, this, this series, which is, you know, in the, in the U.S., I'm going to look at U.S. data. Um, so there is this, this, this uh, non-profit organization, which is called, like, the National Bureau of Economic Research, who is doing many things, mainly, uh, you know, giving money to economists to do research, but which is, all, you know, which has also a kind of, like, a group of experts, which, you know, assess the, the, the state of the economy and announce to the, to the world whether the economy is in an expansion or in a recession. You know, that's, that, that's what they, those guys do, and they are like university professors. And so, so you know, for every quarter since, uh, oops, I'm sorry, for every quarter they just, you know, they, 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 they meet and then they assess the economy and then they, they, say, and they decide whether we are in an expansion or recession. So, and then they put a zero if the quarter is in an expansion and a one if the, the economy is in a recession, okay? Um, okay, so that's, that's um, so you see, so fortunately you see that when you look at the data, there are more zeros than one. So most of the time the economy is in an expansion, that's the US again, but you know, there are like a decent amount of recessions that are kind of, are generally, are, are in general, you know, shorter and sharper than expansions. Because they really don't give intermediate values, the only... Yeah, 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 it's, it's one zero, it's one, it's one or zero, yeah. Yeah, then you could come, yeah, yeah. But that's, that, I mean, that's, yeah, you know, I mean, I think that, uh, I think that if there is a value, it's, it's you know, a value of having a relatively, um, um, say, um, a bold uh, message, because if not, I mean, yeah, we can run, I'm so kind of like, we can run models and find, like, you know, probability of being in an expansion or in a recession, which are, never exactly zero or one, but I think it's kind of, that, that's what they do, okay? Okay, so that's, so I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna try to see if I can find any uh, like regularity, any cyclicality in the economy uh, in, in a very simple way, just by counting basically. So this is what I'm doing. So I'm, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking a quarter in, for which the economy was in a recession and I, and I look at, okay, what's the fractions of, uh, of quarters in which the economy was again in a recession, you know, K period after uh, today, okay? So, so, so if you look at this uh, 20 here, this is telling me, okay, when the economy was in a recession in period zero, in quarter zero, 20 quarters down the road, meaning, uh, meaning after five years, you know, there was a probability, uh, I don't know, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, that the economy was again in a recession. Okay, so that's that's this um, that's what this is, this is this, this those lines are counting. And then it's not it's. I mean, there's a little bit of a margin. This X because what I'm looking at is that conditional of being in a recession today. Am I in a recession in K period plus minus two or three? Because recessions are super short, so you know, so you need to have like a little bit of. A, Enough observation. And so, what do I see? I, I mean, I sort of, I, I mean, I see this kind of a very interesting pattern, which is that, you know, conditional on being in a recession, uh, you know, ten years after, you know, the probability of being again in a recession is, is pretty high, pretty high, about like seventy percent. But then, if you go to like sixty quarters after, it's like super low, like you know, ten percent. And if you go like eighty quarters after, it's like super high again. So we see that this kind of like cyclicality 
meaning that you know, it's as if you know, data was generated by some kind of you know, sine wave with a period of 40 quarters. Okay? So that's, that's, and this is a pattern that you find um, you know, also in, in, in other countries. So where has it been cyclicality in the sense I'm defining? It means that, you know, as I said, if activity is high today, it's likely to be low in L over two period and then high again in N period. So this is not, of course, this is not deterministic, right? It's, it doesn't mean that, oh, we, I know for sure that there's gonna be a recession every 40 quarters. I mean, of course, that's, that's, that's just a, a, you know, an empirical regularity, right? It's, I'm not meaning that the world is, is, uh, is deterministic. Uh, okay, so there's a way. Um, okay, it's, as I said, it's important. Because, you know, when you want to assess, you know, what's, you know, is that a problem that the economy is a big boom today? I mean, according to the Robinson view, no, it's great. I mean, it's a big boom today. It cannot last forever, but we're going to kind of soft land back to the city state. If you, if you believe in this like, kind of like cyclical view, well, I mean, we're in trouble because meaning it means that down the road we're going to have like a, big recession, and, and, and so on and so forth. Other thing, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, tend to believe, including a lot of economists, that, that you know, expansions don't die of old age. And that you know, if we're in expansion, if, we, if at some point the expansion uh, becomes a recession, it's because you know, someone did something wrong, and most of the time it's the fault of the government of the, or of the uh, central bank, you know, according to uh, a lot of people. Well, in this, in a cyclical world, expansions do die of old age because, as I said, you know, it's this idea that uh, you know expansions are sowing the seed of the of the recession. So you can look at that. You can you know you can just estimate like simple duration models again using this the same kind of series of zero and ones. And you know, I mean, uh, yeah, okay. No. I should say you know all this. We're I think we're we're a bit at the limit of the you know of the power of what we can do given the amount of data that we have. So you know. Just, Standard statistical analysis tell, tells us that what, what I'm showing you is significant, but you know, if I had a gun over on my head and then I had to decide whether it's true or not, you know, I would say, oh, please, can we wait for another, uh, uh, another 100 of years or something before I can be sure? But you know, that, that, that's the world in where uh, we live. So this is, you know, this is just showing, you know, using different, different methods, the parametric or non-parametric, but this is just showing, you know, the probability of, okay, let us look at the black line. That's the probability of an expansion ending in, in the next year, in the next two years, as a function of its age in quarters, okay? So what I want you to take out of this thing is that it's, it's increasing. So the longer the expansion has been, the higher is the probability that it, it's gonna happen, okay? So funny enough, it's not really funny, but so we wrote this paper, um, I mean, it's, a, it's a very simple thing to do. It was, it's just that people believe that it's flat. I don't know why exactly, but okay. So it's not, and so we wrote this paper. Uh, I think in 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 in, in, in um, 2018 or something. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 2018, and we said you know it's it's, it's very likely that there's going to be a recession in, in the next uh, year and a half or something. Boom, you know, COVID came, and so we were right. Maybe not for the right reasons, but you know, so I won't take really. Uh, credit out of this per very specific prediction. It was the first time I was, you know, predicting something, and, and I was right for the wrong reason. Uh, okay, so now you know we know that there are like more sophisticated way to look at the cyclicalities, basically because it, cyclicality means also cyclicality in the. It means that a very specific uh, uh, auto covariance function. So we should look at spectral density. That's really what we want to look at. It's a bit at the limit of what we can do given the amount of data, but this, let, let's do that very quickly. And let me refresh your mind like super quickly. So I'm gonna think of the world as being, uh, you know, linear stochastic processes, okay? That are stationary. So if my process is just a white noise, okay? So, you know, I think the, the, the easy way to think of what's the dynamic of the economy is to look at what happens if you do a shot. You know, you, you, you are at the steady state zero, uh, epsilon is one for one period, then back to zero. What, you know what has happened? That you know what happens here is like it's super boring. It's one and then zero again, and the spectral density is flat. So here I'm, I'm writing the spectrum, not you know on the x-axis. I'm not putting uh, uh, you know uh, frequency because you know I'm an economist. I mean frequency. I mean I, I don't understand. I mean I understand, but you know the the, the units are like weird. So I'm putting the period. So it, it's quarters. So it kind of you know 
So a, a cycle of 24 quarters, I mean, I kind of understand more what it is in six years, okay? But obviously, you, know, you can go from one to the other easily. Uh, okay, so that, here the spectral density is flat, you know, there's, 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 no, there's nothing particular at any particular uh, frequency. So um, the typical way, you know, economists uh, model, you know, uh, model, you know, fluctuations is really using those kind of like autoregressive processes of order one with like a, uh, with with a kind of high persistence. Okay, I mean I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but that's you know that's basically what what we do most of the time, and that's the impulse response. That's interesting because it's a model in which you know there's a lot of things going on internally. You know, so clearly, um, clearly, what we observe is very different from from the epsilon, from the exogenous shocks, right? The exogenous shocks are really kind of like transformed by the model, and then, and then our, our job is to, you know, write down the model that creates all this interesting like kind of process. Because if, you know, if with this view of the world, you have spectral density, which is, which is strictly increasing, meaning that, meaning that, I, I should have said, so this is, this is telling us, so, so here what I, what I do, I, I, I'm, I'm basically uh, writing this, this process as, say, a sum of sine waves, each sine wave having a, 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 a specific period. And this is telling me, you know, the, the importance of each of these sine wave in generating the, my data, you know, to, 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 to make it like uh, very simple. And so this is telling me, you know, it's really like the, 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 long, the long periodicity, the, 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 the low frequency that explains that explain most of the, of, of the data. And you see that this is this is my Robinson Crusoe Island uh, economy. Okay. Now you could have like you know, a process which is relatively simple. It's just like a you know it's autoregressive of order two, so that it has like a pair of complex uh, uh, eigenvalues, and then and then you, you you start getting. I mean, so this is you know of course this is not economic theory because then the whole thing is sort of you know why do I you know how can a model how can interaction between agents generate this? But that's going to come later. And so we see, we see the, now we can see these oscillations. And what is interesting is that those oscillations, so here that I made, you know, I, you know everything is like made up so that, so that the, you know, the periodicity is about 30 quarters or, or something. Um, the, yes, exactly. So, and you see that the spectral density in that case, you know, as a peak, as a peak at, you know, this frequency, as, at this periodicity. So, uh, yeah, so one way to, to, to see whether there is indeed cyclicality in the data, whereas you know there is this, there are those kind of like booms creating the next burst, etc. In the data is is to be is to, 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 to check whether we find like peaks in spectral densities of macroeconomic time series. Uh, okay, so in practice, what is very likely to happen is that you know you have different phenomena, and then, so what a good description of the data is something where you have this kind of like you know persistent bit plus this cyclical one, and you add the two, and then you get you know, uh, you know, spectral density of that type, which is globally you know, increasing, but with this, this, this peak at, this is what we typically call business cycle frequency. Yeah. Okay, so if we look at the data, so I'm gonna look at, okay, so, uh, okay, one, one thing is that, I mean, those, those, those guys are, are kind of like, make sense only for stationary time size, right? And if we look at series like uh, income per capita, that's not stationary. It's, there's a trend. So we need to kind of like think of series that are, uh, uh, I mean, that are typically, reasonably, second order stationary. So one is um, hours per capita, how much we work per unit of time per person. That's the US again. So here you see, I mean, you see the series. So those, those gray bars are the ones, the NBR ones, the recessions, okay? And, and the, the, the white uh, intervals are the, the NBR expansions. And so we see uh, several things. We see that obviously there's a lot that has to do with demographics, which changes in you know female labor market participation, sociology. I mean, a lot of things. And those are those those long waves, you know, long movements in 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 in, 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 uh, in our world. And then there are things which are at some kind of higher frequency, which might be more interested from the point of view of a macroeconomist, of a short term or a business cycle macroeconomist, which I am. So nice thing with spectral density estimation is that you know that's exactly what it's meant to do. Uh, spectral representation is to kind of you know look at the different sine waves at different frequency of that guy. And if you, you know, if you estimate that, well, 
you know, th this is what you get. So here I'm, I'm truncating here because then it's going up again because obviously, I should have said, I mean, perhaps if you were paid by, you know, the theory that explains the maximum of the variance of that series, you want to be a sociologist, right? Because, you know, the, most of the variance is, is this long wave, right? Uh, which has to do, as I said, with, you know, family, with like gender uh, equality within the household, this kind of thing. But for some reason, you know, I'm not so, so much interested in money, so I'm not looking at, not trying to explain the, the, this. So this, this is to say that, you know, most of the, the spectral density will be maximum for relatively, you know, uh, high, uh, low peri uh, high periodicity, okay, obviously. But in the short run, you see that, oops, I'm sorry, you see that you have this peak here around 40 quarters, okay, which telling me, oh, there's, there's something cyclical around here. And interesting enough, this 40, if you remember, is the 40 that I was finding when I was doing this count of, uh, you know, look, you, look, using the zero and the ones uh, of the NBR. So it's really, it has really to do with the, this business cycle as defined by, by you know, those, 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 those guys that are supposed to, yeah. Uh, they are like a bit the popes of, uh, of, of business cycle analysis. They, they, they define things. Okay, fine. So that's interesting. And then this is something that is pretty pervasive that you find in a, in a lot of other series. Let me just show you one for, you know, in financial series too. That, that's, that's the delinquency rate, rate. I'm going to use that later. So there are a lot of series in which you do find this peak at uh, business cycle frequency around 40 quarters every 10 years. Eh? So you, you should expect a recession every 10 years. You know, of course, you know, it's not like deterministic. And uh, yeah, okay, good. So that, now the thing is, uh, okay, so can I think of like a simple and stand, standard framework uh, that in, in which you know, cyclicality appears as the consequence of interaction? So this is what I want to do here. I'm going to use a model which, is, which, 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 which will be, um, yeah, simple. I mean, very simple. And then I'll tell you how we uh, do a bit more uh, in the real world. I'm not going to do everything I was playing. I mean, I was planning. I was not planning to do everything in, in, anyhow. So, so you know. So I'm going to set the scene with this kind of reduced form model, and then you know, not sure I will do the, uh, I will do two and three, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So let me start with, with with it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a model, and it's so you can think of it as a kind of agent-based model. People are just doing things because that's you know they routinely behave that way. They are certain heuristics, or you can think that this is the the outcome of some very clever agents. You know we don't. Uh, optimizing along several di dimensions. That's what I'm going to do later, but it's going to give the same uh, reduced form. So we can look at this. And so this is okay. So this is a model which is which has like two variables. So first, let me. Let, so first, there is the, a stock variable. So it's something. So I have you know this is Mr. I at time t plus one. Time is discrete. And you know this stock variable is the depreciated. It's the depreciated <laughs> stock of the previous period plus you know the effort I made, during, I made during this period. So this, this variable is some kind of, a, is, 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 is a kind of sum of past efforts. So think of it as, uh, this, is, this is my, you know, my, this is the, the amount of square meters that I have in my house, okay? And this is, you know, how much I work, how much effort I, I do working, and then the more, you know, the more I work, you know, I mean, the more I buy, uh, you know, larger houses. And then, you know, they depreciate somehow, so those are, those are like kind of houses that, I don't know, that melts or something like that. Okay, good. So that's, so this is, this is just, this is like a kind of like a physical uh, equation, right? I mean, it's a, it has nothing to do with choice. That's, that's, that's the way it is. Think of cars, perhaps. Cars is a better example. Okay. And then, then, you know, I'm interested in this effort. So think of it as maybe, maybe working, deciding to work or deciding to invest, of course. Okay. And then works. So there are some, uh, an interesting constant, but work will depend on two things. So one is, um, you know, what I dislike, and this comes from, you know, either psychology or from, you know, more kind of like uh, axiomatic way of seeing preferences. You know, I typically, you know, preferences are concave, so I dislike to do things very differently from the previous period. I don't like ups and downs, okay? So this alpha two is positive is telling me that I tend to do uh, relatively similarly as compared to the previous period. Okay, so here, how do you model that? Uh, typically, it's called it's what it's called it's called like habit persistence in, in preference theory. It's the idea that um, um, you know, or addiction sometimes it could be called. The more I have consumed in the past, 
the higher today is my desire to, to keep on consuming. So if it, if, it was, if it was cocaine, that would be literally. You know, the more cocaine you had in the past, the more you want today because, you know, because you're just hooked, right? But this works also for you know, other things like have a nice car, nice house, you know, drinking good wine and things of the type, which are not uh, drugs. Uh, okay, then the second thing is, you know, how do I react to my stock? So when I have a, you know, when I have like, you know, a super large TV, flat TV set in each of my uh, rooms in my house, you know, do I want to work more to have an extra one or not? So if, if this alpha one is negative, it means that, you know, the more I have, the less I want at the margin, okay? Well, so that, that's what I call like the kind of durable good house type of uh, behavior, you know? This, this, you know, once I have like a, a castle, you know, once I have like a great apartment in Paris, plus a, a, a cottage in Normandy, plus a summer house in Côte d'Azur, maybe, you know, I'm not gonna work night and day to have like a fourth, or maybe I want something uh, in, in the mountains, right, for the winter holidays, but after that, I promise, you know, I stop, you know. There's no point, you know, going on over and over. So that, that would be a kind of like alpha one negative, but this alpha one could be positive, it's more like it's kind of capital view of the world, uh, you know, so I work hard, and because I work hard, I can buy more and more efficient, you know, machines to operate. And if I have more efficient machines, I'm even more productive, so I have an incentive to work even harder. So that's also possible. And, you know, I we'll see that, you know, the dynamic is pretty different depending on whether we are in that case or the other. Okay, so that's, that's it. So let me make a bunch of assumptions. First assumption, parameters are such that absent of interaction, which is here, there are no interactions, you see, I mean, there are only Mr. I by itself. Do, you know, the, there's a steady state to that economy which is stable and there is smooth convergence. So it's Robinson, okay? So that's, that's what happens. You know, absent of, of, of interactions, you know, things are smooth and boring. Now this could be discussed. We could, you, know, you, could, you could tell me, no, 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 no. It's, you know, people, they love a uh, roller coaster type of life. Some do. Uh, you know, from revealed preference, it seems that not the majority. So now I'm gonna add in a, in a super like, a, uh, you know, simple way, I'm going to add, you know, this F here, which is like, you know, which, which tells me that now what I do also depends on what the others do on average, okay? That's, it's a like super simple way of, of, of modeling it. You can do better, but I mean, you can always do uh, uh, things in a more complex way. That, that's a, that's a, a most uh, theorem. Uh, okay, so here, that, that, that is the only thing that will be nonlinear. And, okay, this is telling me, for example, think of uh, this, this is what, you know, what the others are doing on average. It could be, when I look at prices, what prices are encoding is basically what the, what the others are doing in terms of supply and demand. And if I'm competitive, I'm just reacting to it. So you can think of this as being prices, for example. But you can also, also think of other situations in which, for example, you know, it's about whether I'm gonna buy, uh, you know, a blue shirt or a red shirt. And what matters is really, you know, I don't want to look stupid. If everyone has a red shirt, I don't want to have a green one. So it's like fashion. So what, what the others will do in terms of you know, having a red or a blue shirt, I have to do the same, right? Or, or I have to, you know, or to be different depends on, uh, really depends on the basic. So that, that, that's the idea. And then, so I'm gonna parameterize everything. I'm gonna look locally at, at what is going on, you know, uh, locally around the steady state. I'm gonna parameterize thing by, by this row, which is the slope of this F uh, at the steady state. Okay, I'm going to explain what it is. I mean, it's basically telling me around the steady state, when the others are doing more effort at the margin, when the others are increasing their effort by one unit, I'm increasing my effort by row unit. Okay, that, that's what it means. And I'm going to, you know, normalize things so that when I change this slope, the steady state stays the same. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit irrelevant. Uh, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just for the sake of, uh, of, of the presentation. So here's what can happen. So let me, so this is, you know, this, that, that's my behavior, okay? So in that behavior, XIT, it's the stock, I'm inheriting from the past, it's given. I cannot change it today. My past action, I cannot change it today. So this part here, that's history. So as of today, there's nothing I can do to change it, okay? So today, what I should do, it's a kind of game, so I just, I, I should decide of what to do as a function of what the others are doing, right? And I'm gonna look for uh, an equilibrium to, uh, kind of like an equilibrium to this. So, so let's assume that my, my, my F function is decreasing, so my rho is negative. So this is, you know, this is what I do as a function of what all the others are doing. Uh, that's, that's the you know, history, I cannot change it. And then you know, this, this, this guy here, this function F is decreasing, and I'm gonna look at symmetric equilibrium because everyone is the same. 
So this is that's going to be the equilibrium of the system, and it's called like a period T equilibrium. Here, equilibrium means equilibrium in the sense of you know economist, not in the sense that the system won't move, but in the sense that this is where where all decisions are compatible. Okay, that's that's the. That's, I mean, it would be a Nash equilibrium if I had you know uh, you know frame everything uh, as a game here. I mean, I didn't tell you anything about about um, pair functions, so. But that would be what you would have in the game. So, so that, that's a possible situation. It's called like strategic substitutabilities. So that, that's what happens in competitive equilibrium. Five minutes, OK. So I have to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to speed up. Um, so what does it mean? It means that, um, yeah, so if suddenly everyone else uh, loves apples, Everyone will buy apples that's going to push up the price of apples. And me, I'm going to reduce my quantity of apples. Okay, So my, my behavior will be negatively related to the others. So this is creating stability. Okay, And then another possibility is that you know, I'm following the crowd. But I'm following the crowd, but you know, less than one to one. So you know, if the others decide to, to, to eat uh, one more apples, yeah, OK, I'm going to do, I'm going to follow you guys, but you know, only 0.9. I will eat only 0.9 more. Because you, know, you never know. So that, that's, I'm going, to call that, I'm going to call this weak complementarities. What I'm ruling out is, is, is OK, so uh, I, I, there's another. OK, no, no, it's right. So under, okay, under the assumption that this row is smaller than 1, you can prove that there's a unique you know, equilibrium, a priority equilibrium. And then what I'm ruling out are situations in which, you know, in which at some point, uh, my row, which is the slope here, is bigger than one, meaning that, oh, you do that, I'm going to do even more. But, you know, everyone will do even more, so the equilibrium will, you know, the total will be even more, so I'm going to react by doing even, even more, etc., etc. And then, typically, you end up having multiple equilibria here. I'm going to roll, roll this out. Yeah. I, yeah, okay. That, let's say that it's, uh, I, I, I'm deciding to return. So then what we do, so let me just tell you this proposition, and, uh, okay. So, and then what we do is that, so we start from row equals zero, meaning Robinson Crusoe. And then we increase in row, or decreasing row. We're creating interaction. So first, if we create interactions in the way uh, perfect competition does, what you can show is that the system remains locally stable, and it's even converging faster to the state. So, you know, so competition, perfect competition, is creating a lot of stability, even more stability than what you would have without interactions. Now, if you now increase the row, you increase complementarity between agents, you, you stay below one, but you increase complementarity, you can prove that at some point the steady state will become unstable. Okay? So you will have like a, a bifurcation there. And so, big, you know, and, and, you know, because I kept this F nonlinear, I'm going to be able to look at you know, uh, um, uh, local nonlinear dynamics. And interesting thing is that you know, what you can have is basically. Um, when the when this alpha one is negative, meaning that when the when you know the more you have, the less you want to have at the margin, then you're going to have cycles, endogenous cycles, and they could be either up down up down up down or smooth cycles, depending on whether you like to smooth things. That but you know that's basically the same type of thing. Or but, and now on the contrary, if the more you have, the more you want to do, then you're going to create. Uh, multiplicity of steady states. And the idea is that, OK, the more you want, the, the, the more you have, the more you want to do. Everyone does that. And then you know, we go away from steady state and, 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 and get somewhere else. And so this is, this is giving you so-called hysteresis, meaning that then you know, shocks will have permanent effects. So, so, so what you can have, and again, you know, everything is like super uh, you know, boring to start with. You know, I haven't introduced like crazy uh, you know, hem-shaped, uh, bell-shaped functions or nothing, right? So what you have is that you know, either you have uh, you know two cycles. Either you, okay, steady state is always unstable. Either you have like uh, limit cycles of that type. Either you have uh, you know, the emergence of three of, of two other equilibria. Yeah, those two ones become uh, steady state. Sorry, those two ones become stable. This one is stable, and you're going to have like basin of attraction. If you start from here, you're going to go there. If you start from here, you're going to go there. So you're going to get interesting dynamics. So let me let me skip all this. Uh, one thing which is, okay, let me skip all this. Now let me show you just, um, yeah, well, yeah, one thing. So, so let's, so now we build, we build a model which is 
I'm not going to tell you anything about the model. It's a model in which we believe that agents are super, super uh, smart. They optimize over an infinite horizon. They know exactly what will happen. You know, they are like, you know, they are really like super smart. Uh, they and they interact. And there are reasons for why, you know, there are complementary, complement, uh, strategic complementarities. And we estimate that model, uh, you know, trying to fit, you know, this, this spectral density of ours, right? So, and that, that's what the model does. So the, what the model does is like this is smooth line. And so once you do that, you, you know, uh, you know, it took like a few years to develop the model, so I'm not expecting to, 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 to present it today. Um, so that's typically, you know, one sample draw, oh, US data, post-war US data. That's a sample draw of what the model generates. Interesting thing, if we shut down fluctuation uh, shocks in that model, then you're gonna get that. So indeed, you find that, you know, oh, the economy here, it's really, in, you know, it's really kind of like unstable, not exploding, but kind of unstable. So it's fluctuating, not because of shocks, it's fluctuating because of its internal dynamics. Uh, we need shocks because, you know, this is like a purely deterministic and predictable economy. That's not what we see. But shocks here are not there to create fluctuations. They are there to create uh, the absence of total predictability of what's going on. So it's a very different uh, view of the shocks. And interesting things now, and that's why, you know, I guess economists are paid for, perhaps, or I don't know, we, we wish we were paid for that. What you can do is that you can look at, you know, a policy parameter is some monetary policy. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but, you know, by changing that policy parameter, so this is what is happening without shocks, uh, you know, in, by changing this policy parameter, you can basically make the economy more stable. And making the economy more stable is not, you know, is not basically trying to contract shocks, but it's trying to change this kind of internal propagation of the economy that makes it locally unstable and globally stable. I think I have to stop here. Thank you very much.